Okie dokie. We are back at Bloodborne, and like I said, we are still on Father Gasquan. Unfortunately, this is high enough New Game Plus that I am having just a little bit of trouble, but we will still be able to make it. I have I have full confidence that we can beat this. So let's try this again and see what comes of it. So our our strategy for Father Gaspawn is to again just kind of do the same things that we were doing. We're we're not too far off. It's just that I'm not <laughs> not being um, quick enough on my dodges and things. And unfortunately, the arena for fighting Father Gaspawn, especially with the second form, is really difficult because all of the graves are just tiny spots where you can get stuck on things and there's not much you can do about it, unfortunately. But I'm hoping that we can just kind of jump through this and get it done real quick. Um, and move on to some of the other bosses in the game. The next boss will be... Um, Wow, I'm kind of forgetting, I'm kind of spacing the names of the bosses, the Dark Souls, playing Dark Souls recently, and Mortal Shells kind of like, completely made me forget what the uh, names of stuff are. So there's a, we will fight another werewolf next, and then instead of the, instead of a sort of a, more humanoid werewolf we will fight. Oh, let me think. The Bloodstarved Beast, that's what we're going to fight next. So Bloodstarved Beast, and then we will fight Vicar Amelia, so a leader of the church. We will see her transform, and then after Vicar Amelia, we'll, be, we'll go into the Forbidden Woods, I think, and face off against the Shadows of Yarnum. Oh. Doing a little bit better. Hello. Don't you dare, don't you dare just one shot me. Uh, do a double heal here. Just try to maybe get a little bit better at this. Nope, the dodges are all over the place right now. get the uh I didn't quite get the visceral backstab unfortunately there we go ha I got him <laughs> and that will allow us to unlock the next area, which there's a gate up here, so we, we definitely are locked in to that boss fight. We can't open this gate without the key that he drops. Um, and I think he's kind of meant to, I think maybe he got put in charge from the church to um, keep this area blocked off. So the other thing that we're going to look at real quick, I talked about um, Father Gasquan having a, a family, that body right down there with the item. That's actually his wife. I would pick up that item, but I really, really don't need to, and I kind of want to just keep moving forward as much as possible um, and just kind of start running through stuff again. Um, yeah, so his wife... You, we know that it's his wife because the 
child, his daughter, when you talk to the daughter, she talks about a red brooch. So the brooch, come on, um, the, that's the brooch. So you know that that's the mother's body, unfortunately. Um, so to get to the next bosses, you actually can do two different things. You can either pay 10,000 blood echoes and get a key to unlock um, the, some gates to be able to get to Vicar Amelia, or you can take a back route by defeating the uh, Bloodstarved Beast. So we're going to go ahead and beat the, attack the Bloodstarved Beast to get the back route unlocked. And any the Bloodstarved Beast is still a boss that is in the game, so we don't want to we don't want to miss the Bloodstarved Beast. And as much as it seems weird. We are going to talk to this guy a little bit. This this person is actually surprisingly a good person. He doesn't. This they don't look like a good person, but they're actually a good person. They do protect um, the the people that you send that you can send to this chapel. And we are going to send one person to the chapel just because we want to be able to um, get unlock all of the bosses of the game. So, and like I said, we're just going to try to run by most of this stuff, if at all possible. Let's see, did we get followed? No, it doesn't look like it, so that's good. Especially in the uh, thing that we're doing with the new game plus and all of that. Okay. Um, hmm. I guess let's go ahead and talk to Alfred. Alfred is another NPC of the game. You can get. You don't really. Well, you can summon him for some battles, but his storyline isn't necessarily. Um, isn't necessary, but we may be able to take a little bit advantage of um, of his storyline to um, have some kind of cool stuff happen so that's what we're going to that's what we're caring about talking to him at all is because we'll get to fight him later on in the game if we want to um, but for now we're just going to get our sorry butts over to old Yarnum and see all of what will become of everything if you if it, the spread of this plague kind of takes over actually while I'm at it pungent clock cocktails are kind of scarce to get to or just uh, be able to get so that's why we're Picking them up because maybe in later runs I might want them, <laughs> and they cost, they cost so much to be able to get normally. Uh, they're really the punch and blood blood cocktails are really cool in that. Oh, sorry. I guess I should probably tell why I'm teleporting to the hunter's dream. It's because when you go into the hunter's dream, it refills in your bullets and your blood vials, which the blood vials are the healing item in the game. So I want a full set of that, and I have a lot stocked up, so... Sorry, so the Blood Cocktails, what they do is they kind of attract... They're basically attract beasts, specifically. They don't attract anything else, but you can throw them to kind of make the... Um, the these kinds of beasts, this werewolf, he would, he would smell the Blood Cocktail, and he would run towards it. So we're not going to bother too much... Though we don't actually need them. We're just going to bypass all of this stuff. Don't hit me. I'm sure that you would absolutely wreck me, and I do not want to be wrecked. Just leave me alone. Um, we are also dodging through this area because most of it's not needed and the storyline isn't 
necessary, particularly. Um, there's a hunter at the top of this tower known as Durja, or, yeah, Durja. And, um, oh, interesting. Um, we don't really care too much about his storyline. We're just going to get around all of this and avoid having to do much. So the thing that we, the reason that we attacked right there is because it causes that fire and it kills off a few of the different werewolves. So let's go ahead and actually equip a pungent so we can avoid having to fight anybody too much. Let's see. Whoever's left, let's go ahead and do it right there. And we will run through. I guess actually if I hadn't done that um, that fire, then I think I think that may count as harming the werewolf. So you can't if you don't harm any of the enemies in this area. Oh man, actually. It would be a good idea to go ahead and do this. Go ahead and let them suck on that so that they leave me alone. At least for a little bit. Nope. Okay. Nope. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. I'm pretty confident about killing the Bloodstorm Beast, so we're just going to try to run through here real quick and not get the shortcut that will allow us now. If we die from the Bloodstorm Beast, then we may go ahead and activate the, uh, <laughs> um, the shortcut, <laughs> but I don't really foresee us having too much of a difficulty, so... I, I say I say that, and then you know, like I got killed by Gascon like four times. So come here. So you can see the kind of flaps that are flipping around its head. So that's actually um, those are that's its back that's peeled off. Which kind of is a sort of gruesome, grotesque, but that's that's what happens when you. Uh, the other thing about this guy is that he is um, he's filled with poison, unfortunately. So that's why you don't want to don't want to hang too much around him. If we can help it, but he's going to be kind of a pain sometimes. He has a lot of lunge attacks, he has a lot of um, stuff that can kind of catch us off guard if we're not careful, but you can wrap around the backside of him and get back um, backstabs. So anything that you can get a backstab on, you can actually visceral. I mean, you can parry, I mean. So we're... Oh man, why did it not give me that backstab? Crap. Okay. Oh, I should have run up and attacked him, but that's okay. We can do it. We can still do this. We're not in trouble yet. Don't touch him. There we go. So you can see my poison meter up there at the top. I haven't died to Bloodstar Beast in a while, so that's why I'm kind of confident that we can get it. Is there we go? Now we got it. I'm kind of confident on on him now, and took very little damage actually. Mostly that. Oh wow, it's really killing me. I wonder if New Game Plus does it a lot quicker. 
Okay, so we're teleporting back out because when you go back to that little chapel that I talked about, it's the, the shortcut actually opens up there. Um, and we will just kind of go straight towards Cathedral Ward. That's what we want. Um, we'll just go straight towards Vicar Amelia and see if we can't maybe knock her out as well. She's a little bit different from... Um, Oh, that first boss! Now I'm it's slipping my mind. Of course I'm. Of course I'm not <laughs> remembering it <laughs> right when I want to remember it. Um, so this door was closed before, but now we actually get to have it open, um, and we will just. We're not going to bother with too much in this tower. Um, we will come back to this tower later, but for now we're just going to run past enemies and go here. We're not going to actually enter the healing church workshop because we don't need anything up there. We just need to get into here. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of a weird thing here. So I think it's like that. There we go. So this is another area, but we need to get to this area for the end of the game. So, there are four different... There's there's an item that you need three of. One of the four that's possible to get in any one playthrough is in this place right here. This old workshop. So, actually, it's up right here. And you can see it's the old workshop because there's the doll that um, we've kind of run past in the Hunter's Dream a few times. She... Uh, there's, you know, sort of a copy of her there. Or I should say, that's the that's the original doll. The one that's in the Hunter's Dream, uh, there's a lot of questions about who she is and what she's there for. Um, but we're not bothering too much. The thing that I got was that um, third, uh, one third of an umbilical cord. So... Let's go ahead and just move past this guy real quick. We don't want to fight him too much. You, I think you can see me fight one of those guys in um, my playthrough or run through of a chalice dungeon. So if you're really curious, I think you can go there and, and see one of them. Could, I guess I could be wrong about that, but... We just need to get to this. This elevator is what we were looking for, actually because it allows us to do this. Open up the gate from the backside. Like I said, you can buy a key that allows you to open up this gate. Or you can do it like this. Um, so let's... I guess we can equip the, the thing in here in a second. So we're going to just run past these people. Oh, nope, don't touch. Go away. <laughs> they were on me a little bit quicker than I expected. And the animation for this protects you from their attacks no matter what they try to do. So even though they're really close, if you just kind of start immediately rolling, you can get away from them. And surprisingly, they won't come into this church. They're not allowed to. Well, they, they can, but they're not really supposed to, it seems like. So they just kind of hang out there. We are going to, once again, that very, very first boss we did in Vicar Amelia are very similar, so we're, that, meaning that they're both beasts, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Actually, I wonder, I'm not exactly sure if the blood, beast blood pellet works with these, so let's go ahead and equip it, and we will go into the battle with one. So, Vicar Amelia is currently in charge of the church. Before her was Lawrence, the, uh, the first vicar. We will see Lawrence later in the game. Um, he's, um, well, let's just leave it at that. He's, he's kind of an interesting fellow with when we find him. But for now, we get to witness her transformation into a beast because the whole thing about this game, I mean, it's called Bloodborne, so it kind of 
kind of makes sense that everything is about the blood. But there's something wrong with the blood that they've been using. Um, they found blood that seemed to have healing qualities uh, deep underground. And there was this... They, they realized that there was this whole society deep underground that uh, was doing um, interesting things, shall we say, for now. We will see the depths of what they what was going on. But for now, we're just going to... See if we can't not die. Oh my gosh, I totally dodged for that. She hits me, I may actually die. Oh, come on. Come on, Amelia. Don't be a meanie pants. Let's... Oh, no, it didn't give me this roll. She has so much health. It's crazy how much health she has. Oh, no, don't, don't die. Don't die. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. Now we got the visceral. That was what I was trying to do earlier, but it wasn't really working. I wonder if she's going to try to heal. Nope. We're doing pretty well, actually. Tell I'm not ready for a hitless run. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get me, don't get me, don't touch me. Ah ha 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 ha! There we go. Good, good, good. That's This is going smooth. I mean, I'd say smooth. But this is going really well, actually. Surprisingly well. Um, and I got her pendant that she was clutching, which you can, we can, you know, kind of take a look at it here. Let me see. So, pendant of Vicar Amelia used to change into a blood gem, which fortifies weapons. So we can use that for a blood gem, but I have really, really good blood gems, so I don't need that. So this pendant passed down among the Vicars who head the healing church as a reminder of the cautionary adage, words that will open the gates of Bergenworth. So we are going to see what those, what that password is, what those words are, the adage of the church. Um, straight from the words of Master Willem. Master Willem, Master Willem I've, I've come, come to farewell. bid you farewell. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. No, you no, think now to betray me. No. no, but you will never listen. I tell you, I will not forget our adage. We are born of the blood, made men by the blood, undone by the blood. Our eyes are yet to open. Fear the old blood. I must take my leave. By gods, Lawrence, fear it. There he is. <laughs> okay, so by the gods, fear it, Lawrence. So the the idea here is that Master Willem is in charge of Bergenworth, the, 
Bergenworth College or something like that. Um, and he and Lawrence had a disagreement, and Lor so Lawrence went on to found the, the Blood Church, essentially, and went off to do his own things. And Master Willem disagreed with the methods which Lawrence was using. Lawrence wanted to use the blood to do stuff with, to experiment with, because this game is all about human evolution, like trying to further mankind into something more. And um, Master Willem thought that that could be achieved using eyes, having eyes on the inside, which is, if you can look at the top corner of my screen, there's like a, there's a big number that's like, you know, 11,607,190, that's my blood echoes, but the number underneath it, that's my insight, that's the eyes that I have on the inside. Um, as Master Willem would have said. So that means that I can see the secrets of the of the world, essentially. Um, which we are going to um, drop and get rid of. But that will be done in another episode. At the next episode, we will probably get rid of our insight uh, because of what it does to the game. We'll talk more about insight and what we're going to do after this point. So thank you all for watching, and I hope you are enjoying the series. And... I hope that you continue watching. Thank you, and I will see you next time.